Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at Shipyard Pugsley's Signature Series Smashed Pumpkin, an ale with natural flavor, 12 ounce bottle, $2.99 at Stein's Deli, 9% alcohol. All right, brewed in Portland, Maine. Yeah, I gotta post this on New England Beer Reviews, which is what he wants us to do, Jeff, who does his own videos. Uh, 26 international bitterness units. This was introduced in 2009. They use two row um, British pale ale malt and um, malted wheat, also light Munich malt. The hops are Willamette and Saffron. It's a good score on Bear Advocate, the Bros. City, very good. So B, B. Plus. 86 out of 100 on Rapier, 94 out of 100 for the style, and a most excellent score on the beer and me. I've never had it. People have often, over the last few years, asked me to do a Smash Pumpkin review, and I said I can't get it. Okay, now, I didn't realize it had a jack-o'-lantern on the cap. I would have had this posted before Halloween instead of after, but I didn't realize that. But, you know, pumpkin people eat pumpkin pie all during Thanksgiving evening to Christmas, so not a problem. $2.99 for the, this bottle at Stein's Deli. Um, I saw people complaining on the internet. They did... <clears throat> oh, it's so tight. These things are twist caps. Sometimes you just cannot twist them with these shipyard beers. They're like fused. <laughs> um, they were saying they some of them paid $14. Yep, twist cap, theoretically. $14 for a 22-ounce bomber. So this was $2.99, so about $12 bucks for a four-pack. I didn't need a four-pack. He had so many pumpkin beers at Stein's. All right, a lot of, pretty good amount of smoke. So Dan Stein really brings in some interesting products that I've noticed other stores do not bring in. It's a orange hued head. Like it has an orange tint to it in, on the white side, but uh, now the appearance is orange, <laughs> hazy, but not opaque, bubbly. Mm -hmm. Now you say, you're putting that in a NOLA. Well, I don't have a shipyard uh, shaker pint. You're putting it in a pint, a shaker pint. I read somebody had posted something on Facebook about the notorious shaker pint. A glass that was never meant to have any drinks in it. It's made for mixing drinks. It ruins the flavor and the aroma of the beer, blah, blah, blah. I read the article, I said, I don't know about all that. In, in fact, Shipyard, and a lot of other companies for that matter, but Shipyard shows not even a branded, it just shows a clear glass like this next to the smashed pumpkin. All right, I'm already smelling that aroma now. When I was wondering, because uh, I was watching video reviews, I didn't comment on any of them since I hadn't had it, but I was watching them and they were saying, oh, uh, it's uh." Some people say it was just like a hepped up, hopped up, hepped up, heftier version of the pumpkin head and Chad's beer reviews. He was saying it had some of that, that pumpkin soda. I never thought pumpkin head had a pumpkin soda flavor. I thought it had like a candle wax, spice candle. Let's go and see. It smells somewhat like the pumpkin head with the cinnamon and the ginger and all that nutmeg, but <clears throat> Like another person remarked, it's got more of the pumpkin pulp aroma. 9%, I think this is enough, 12 ounces. I wouldn't want to go with 22 ounces of 9% alcohol. I did notice most people so far, about halfway through, said they liked it better than pumpkin. My problem with pumpkin, and I've never done a video, but I drank some one time out of the bottle, is that it's too sweet, it's too rich, it's too, I guess you'd say cloying, it's like too much of a mouthful of spices. I didn't hate it, I think I still gave it an A minus, but it just wasn't for me. Well, this one has some peppery spices now, almost like white pepper, Jamaica pepper, um, uh, and also some cinnamon, nutmeg. But it definitely seems to have a pepper aspect, which is peculiar. Not really pumpkin pie crust or anything like that. 
pumpkin pulp, which is usually a low profile flavor, but you do pick up that gourd thing. What did they say the bitterness? 26? I guess so. It doesn't come out nice lacing. It doesn't come out too bitter. 9% ABV. I'm kind of feeling that like proper hops used to talk about the gentle warmth of 9% alcohol before he abruptly quit and then abruptly came back and then abruptly quit again with what one video made. But enough of that. Uh, I shouldn't really resent when people give up doing video reviews. Some of them probably either they just lose interest and I can't really, how can I say, I demand that you be interested. And secondly, I think some of them may have, pro they could have problems in their life. Like, you know, like something could happen. Like maybe they were injured in a wreck and they can't do it. Or they have to concentrate on their job. So I understand there are reasons. And they're not just that, and they're not reasons like they have to answer to me. But I do always wonder why. Um, the mouthfeel is on the heavy side, medium to heavy. The finish is semi-wet, semi-dry in the middle there. Um, it's, um, it's a hefty beer. For some reason, when I bent down, I thought of Monkey Fist. <laughs> Not in the flavor or taste. I just thought of it. Like, I wouldn't mind having a monkey fist. Okay, um, uh, maybe the ringwood yeast is given it a, a unique character because it certainly is different. It's not like a run of the mill pumpkin beer, but I don't even know if there is such a thing because most of the ones I try do seem differentiated. But like Tanya Makowski, I'm still saying that Buffalo Bills is the best. The original one, you know, that I can't find. Um, I don't know. Do I like this better than Pumpkin Head? Mm, I can't say that. Uh, I like that. Can I, first, I threw me off, but I do now like that candle wax thing. I do like the mouthfeel on that beer, and it smells and tastes like a Cost Plus World Market store. So it, it really is something. Uh, this one here, though, <coughs> skills to me. This one here does have a lot of character. Character! It's got a lot of character! I think I'm gonna give this beer a most excellent score! Yeah, I'm gonna give it an A. A solid A, so... Hey, it's alright. Just like uh, the beer in me, and they're saying a uh, most excellent A, yes. Um, not the kind of thing I would run out to buy, but um, on the other hand, I would definitely have it again and I would highly recommend it. So, Les Ailes, Les Bon Temps, Les, most excellent beer, real fast, 1985, Athlon Southeastern Football. Of course, they're going to have LSU on the cover, the local state school, and then Tulane, the second, the, you know, the number two school, the, the, the New Orleans team. Uh, so, 85, interesting season, not for Tulane, they won one whole game, uh, but you notice Mac Brown there, beginning his career, but uh, the clean cut look, yeah, uh, I don't know if RPM Fashions is still around, but I remember looking at that and I was thinking, yeah, <clears throat> the short hair is really coming back in, which I was happy about. So you really stop seeing the hair down on the ears, you know, the 1979, 80 to... 85 style there <clears throat> that really started to back off in, in 85 so that and this was no uh, you know mullet or anything he had a really sharp uh, haircut and the girl thought so since she's a model and got paid to do that all right anyway uh, <laughs> so Florida Kerwin Bell they had so many problems and that's why Spurrier came in because they had so many issues with recruiting violations. Uh, I'll go real fast. Heineken, ah oh, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, 
Here's one more thing. Alabama, they they went to uh, White Helmets for a while under Perkins, and um, that was actually going back to an older look, but the fans didn't like it. <clears throat> they especially didn't like the fact that they weren't winning a lot, so that's why he was excused from the program. But anyway, the head coach, but, uh, you know, and then he was at Tampa Bay Buccaneers Pro Football. Y'all going down to New Orleans!